So it's been about a week since iOS 12 Beta 1 was released by Apple, and a lot of the talk has been about these guys, the Animojis. And yes, they are super, super cute, and there's lots more of them now, so you can really have a play with it. But I think that for me, what is really exciting is the advance in this technology and how accurate it is in replicating your face movements. And just, I'm curious and fascinated to see where this will then go in the future when third-party developers get their hands on this and you know create games and functions and apps that take this to the next level so I think that it's great and I think that it's cute but I'm really excited about how this technology is going to be used by third-party developers let me know your thoughts what you think it could be used for in the comments guys now, one of my favorite applications, and it might not be everybody's, is the Books application, and I'm so, so pleased that Apple have rebranded it. It's now just called Apple Books, but the interface is so much sleeker, so much more easy to use and navigate throughout. And when you go into it, you get this, which is brilliant. You've got your reading now, your library, your bookstore, and your audiobooks, which I could never find in the other one. So this is a definite favorite of mine. It's the updated Apple Books and wait till we'll show you on the iPad because it looks insane there. Another favorite again which looks just as good if not better on the iPad but looks brilliant on the iPhone is the Stocks app. Now not everybody is into stocks but if you are learning about stocks then what a great way to do that that you can go into the stock itself you can then read some news stories and find out about what's going on with that stock and all in the same place and all very very easy to navigate and again when you go back and you go back to the top where you can see all of your different stocks click into them and if one of them is having a great day you can hopefully click in and see the new story linked directly below as to the reason why that is so stocks application is great and again when I show you the iPad version of iOS 12 I'm hoping that you'll see that it's brilliant too Okay, so the next app I want to talk to you about is the Measure app. Now, that's because I'm just not sure whether this is just a little gimmicky and whether it will ever be any good. Now, first thing to say is that they've moved the level feature that was within the Compass app. That's now found here in Measure. And it's very, very easy to operate as it always has been. You can just tip the phone and it finds the level point. Just be careful about the buttons on each side because that can affect things. Now, into the Measure facility, you'll get um, a little bit of collaboration that you need to do. So you need to move the phone around and then you get this point here. Now, the phone does give you some feedback, which I think is really clever when you're approaching a corner. And so you know when it's almost like locking on to where it believes the corner is. But as you can see from this video, it's a little bit fiddly. And yeah, I've come up a little bit short there, guys. So the actual uh, measurement of the keyboard is 41.87 centimeters, and this has come in at 37. In fact, even when I thought I got it from point to point, it still came in a couple of centimeters short. So maybe just a bit gimmicky at this stage. So navigating between apps has got even easier and a lot smoother. It used to be that you'd get this screen coming up and then you'd have to flick all the different applications up and get them to close, whereas now you can just do it in one smooth movement and get that individual application to close. You can still do it the other way and close them individually by swiping up, but this is a lot smoother and you can even bring it back and then scroll through like so. So that makes life a little bit easier. So from the lock screen, you've now got the ability not only to go straight to the camera mode, which does seem to launch quicker than it's ever done before, but you can also go straight into the, your torch, and you've got that torch facility there. I think that's really good. Now, what I would like to see is the ability to customize that lock screen, and wouldn't it be great if you could choose which application opens? So I'm not sure whether that's in the works. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm certain you can't do it at the moment. I know that on some jailbreaks you can but not obviously with iOS 12. But that's just something which I would like to see in the future. So I've been playing around with the final one I'm talking to you about today, which is screen time. I've been playing around with this for the last few days, and it is really, really interesting to see not only how many times you're picking up your phone to use it, but what you're spending your time doing. How productive are you being? Are you actually talking to people and communicating, or are you just browsing the net and on social media? Now, what's going to be even more interesting is that for people that control or manage their children's phones, this is going to be absolutely vital because you can set downtime, you can set limits to which applications they're on and how long they spend on those applications per day. So it gives you lots more information. Now this is very similar to a lot of Android apps where you've had that information for years. So this is probably long overdue, but it's finally nice to see this type of information and data coming to an iOS device.
So I think it's going to be really interesting how people respond to this, and not just for those people that are controlling their children's phones. I think that this is really sensible for yourself to control and limit how much time you spend with your phone. They say don't be a slave to your work. Well, don't be a slave to your phone either. And sometimes it's a case of just setting control limits, and this will help you do that so that you can manage your life a little bit better. Guys, that's all I wanted to talk to you about in this edition of the iOS 12 for the iPhone Beta 1. I'll keep you fully updated on updates in further betas, but make sure you subscribe and hit the like button if you found it useful, and I'll see you on the next one, which will all be about the iPad.